Hi everyone, welcome to this year's Easter Paint With Me watercolor session. Each Easter, I like to create a watercolor sketch. It's a little bit different than the normal. We do have some um, plants in this one and some buds. Not too many flowers, but a reflection and thoughts on waiting Saturday this year of what it looks like for the disciples and the women and the other people in Jesus' day to wait for him when they thought he was completely gone and what that looks like and means for us today. I talk a little bit that, about that on the video. My hair does not get in the video. Sorry about that on this time-lapse vision, um, but paint with me and I hope you have a wonderful Easter. Welcome to this year's Easter um, Paint With Me session. Um, I'm so excited to be with you. I was thinking this week about what I wanted to paint and I'm gonna include in the notes the other Easter and Holy Week paintings that we've done in the past. This week, um, I thought we would enter into um, a Saturday painting. This is gonna come out a few days earlier, but um, I don't think I've captured before that sense of waiting We've done um, paint with me. Um, we've done some watercolor sketches and devotionals uh, with Good Friday. And then of course with Sunday, Easter Sunday and some flowers and daffodils and Easter lilies. But just reflecting this year, year on the in-between and the agony of the darkness and the silence in the waiting period. So um, on the blog, I'll have a couple pictures of the sketch. But if you wanna sketch with me today, what I have done here is I've created uh, a scene we have, and I'm, you know, we're using our imagination. I'm wondering, could you see Golgotha with the crosses from where Jesus was buried? Um, we know that he was buried in a tomb. It was probably a hole in the, in the earth, in the, in like a hill. And so I have a hill here and a hill behind. Um, I have a bench here. I'm going to talk about that, a candle, and then Jerusalem in the background, just of course symbolically these buildings because we know it was Passover, it was a huge time of celebration. And so we know there would have been lots of people around and you're just wondering, right? You're wondering about what they were saying. It was um, not only pa the Passover celebration, but it was also, um, we know it was um, the Sabbath. And so that none, when Jesus was Good Friday and then the Sabbath, and so we know they were all quiet, waiting, not working, following the traditions and customs of the day. So I'm going to start out before, as we get painting, we're just going to use a couple of colors, blue, paints gray, sap, sap green, a little bit of yellow and browns. And so I'm going to mix um, blue with um, paints gray, and that is going to come up with um, a pretty, a dark, kind of midnighty sky and I'm going to just start out I'm going to get a little bit wet here with the sky and um, I'm not going to paint it completely dark we are going to include a little bit of a uh, yellow as if it was perhaps sunset and the light is there we know that the light was going to rise but they didn't nobody knew right and so once again getting that little bit wet I'm going to come over here and just create that sense of darkness. If it looks too blue, just don't hesitate to get some more Payne's gray or black and put that in. Don't worry about the sky all needing to be one color. Is When you look up at the sky, it often isn't at night, especially if there's a storm coming through. You might see lots of different colors. So I'm just going to move through there. And now that I have that in, I'll come in a little bit closer. I'm going to go ahead and also paint the rock that same Payne's gray with a little bit of blue and just moving that through here now and coming through here just painting that nice and dark and adding some blue into it just a little bit so we create a bit of a gray look and moving through there and then I'm going to go ahead and I am also going to do just a bit of outlining on some of the, a little bit of the buildings, not a lot, just a little bit. This is a watercolor sketch. Once again, we're not doing tons of detail here. I'll probably come back in with some brown. I'm gonna make my picture down here. I'm gonna add some blue in there as well. All right, let's go ahead next, and I'm gonna pick up, um, I'm gonna pick up some of the green, and I'm gonna pick up a sap green. If you have other greens, that's fine. If you don't have a brighter green, you can always add brown to it. But just thinking of the mood as well, the sunset, I'm going to go through here and add in the sap green and then I'm going to actually go over it with some brown. 
So I'm going to move through here and I've used my pen to create some grass. Because of the watercolor sketch, it's easy to, the colors blend in and it's hard to create those, those distinguishing grass pieces. So sometimes I just add them in with the micron pen and we're going to continue to work around here. I've got a path going here. And just some thoughts on that in-between day. This is all speculation, right? We do have an account of the disciples going on the road to Emmaus, but that is um, after Jesus has risen, and yet they don't know he's risen, so they're in that waiting period. And they are in incredible mourning, and they had had so many expectations of Jesus and what he meant to them. And um, I think that story really captures what everyone must have been feeling and s sensing. I was thinking too about Peter and after betraying Jesus, he never got a chance before Jesus died, right? To make up and he was just sitting with that. We know that he ended up going back fishing, not um, going back to what he had done before. I imagine that he thought it was all over. We think about all of the path, all of Jesus' disciples, what they must have thought. I'm gonna actually, okay, I'm gonna pause talking here on the around the the, um, the tomb where Jesus is buried, I, I again just thinking was there le was there vines creeping up and growing? I don't know, but I am just grow painting these vines, growing, growing, growing. You do wonder, did the earth know? Did they know it was coming? Um, we don't know. The flowers, the birds, were they especially quiet on that? Sabbath day in between the second day when the whole world thought that Jesus was not coming back and that the Son of God was gone forever. What were the angels doing? I'm not sure. We just a wonderful to be in heaven one day and to hear their stories. Did they know what was going to happen? I'm going to pick up some brown now. I have raw umber and I have burnt sienna. I'm going to pick up the lighter one first, the burnt sienna, and I'm going to go ahead and just lay down the colors of the bench. So I was, I made this bench, I created the bench because I was thinking about the disciples. I was thinking about the women. I was thinking about Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And what did they do? Did they must have just the whole day must have felt like the longest day of their entire lives if the day before Good Friday had not felt longer. But that sense of dismay and despair did any of them remember Jesus' words that he would come back to life, that he would be with them forever? We don't know. We don't have any of that context. I think it's interesting each year as we go through Holy Week, and I know some years I am better than others about really entering into that silence, into the this, to this sadness, into the, the emptiness. And I think it's so special that we celebrate Easter every year because Jesus is rising from the dead meant that we all rise to, that all things are restored, that no matter how hard or dead things feel or seem or look in Christ, he brings everything back to life. He makes everything new, no matter what our season is right now. And Easter is a reminder of that, that death doesn't have the last word. It doesn't have the last say. I'm just adding some dark brown on my bench. However, we all go through lives. Through our lives, we have periods of just waiting, right? Waiting without answers, without not knowing how things are going to turn out. Waiting and hoping or waiting. I know I have waited at times in unbelief of thinking that nothing was going to turn around, that things could not be restored. And I wonder how many of the disciples and the women and the others who had followed Jesus thought that too that it was all over. And so they sat and sat and on the Passover, I don't know a lot, I'm sorry, but on the Sabbath, I don't know tons about Jewish tradition, but I believe they couldn't work. It was a day of stillness and it just, the hours must have just felt like forever. And so as we paint this, just entering into that, that waiting day, that anticipation, of course, we know what happens we know that the end was not, 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 it was not over yet, but they did not. Just like for many areas in our life, we do not either. And so we are part as disciples, this side of the resurrection, we have to learn to trust Jesus with all of the things that we don't know. Okay, 
let's look at this grave site, this hill where Jesus is buried. So I have the vines around. Let's add in some brown though. I don't, we're thinking that there was probably a lot of earth if it was a hill of sorts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and here and start adding in my earth color as well. I'm wondering if it was more of a stone that, you know, you had the, like a big rock that the gray was carved out, carved out of. I don't know. But we know there was a huge stone in front of it so that no one could come and, as the priest has suspected, steal the body. So Pilate ordered that stone, if I have my memory serves me correctly. So here was a stone, and I'm wondering too, did anyone come and just sit outside Jesus' grave on that Saturday, on that Sabbath day? Were they allowed to? I'm not sure. I'm wondering though if they just sat and waited and watched and hoped and offered up prayers. Again, I'm just, I'm imagining, this is where that imagination takes over of what might have been happening. We're not sure but we know that must have been a very quiet day, a very somber day. Okay, I'm gonna add some darkness in, and I'm just kind of wondering too, what you might be waiting for this Easter season, this spring season, if there are things in your heart that feel dead, things in life that feel dead that you are needing Jesus to come and resurrect, whether it's a relationship or simply your hope, and you're sitting here and you're waiting. And I know that it's hard to wait. Nobody likes to wait. And yet lots of things happen while we wait. I think maybe the biggest lesson that all of us learn during the waiting season is it is not up to us. There's so many things in life that we simply don't have control over, but how we wait is important. All right, I'm just gonna paint this brown in here and I'm creating my dirt roads my dirt around the grave site. I'm just gonna add in some more around here, keeping it pretty loose. Up over on Golgotha, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the dark area over here. I'm gonna add in some green over it because I just can't help also blending that spring narrative in too. That spring, and sp spring comes after winter, always. And after winter, it feels like everything is dead and spring is never coming and yet spring always comes. Life always comes. And I love that Easter comes in the springtime, reminding us that death never has the final say. I'm gonna come back over here and then just create that contrast against the town and against this hill right here. And move, just letting that water move through, creating that contrast of the fight, right, between death and darkness and life and new growth. So coming up here, I'm gonna come back a little bit and let's add in a little bit of yellow now. I'm gonna add just a little bit now. I'm gonna do a couple of things. Right here, I wanna add a little bit more darkness. So I'm gonna add more paints gray in. I'm gonna come around here, creating that sense of shadow. I cannot help to but think about Mary as she is going to be the first one to see Jesus in the morning. And if this is nighttime, you must think that she went to bed full of anticipation to anoint the Lord's body as she desired to do. Maybe she even thought about this was going to be her final last time to just spend a few minutes with her Lord, with, the, with her friends who administered to Jesus while he was alive. Their final gift to him, would be, they would minister to him in his burial. Okay, and I'm gonna add just a few leaves on this tree here, just a few, just signaling life. Spring means life is coming again, and Easter is that reminder of life forever. This has been a little bit more of a challenging week for me. In fact, um, it was dark and it's raining right now. I realize I just have to record or it's not gonna happen. So I'm hoping there's enough natural light. But I was just kind of struggling this week a little bit with what I was gonna paint. I The ideas were not coming. Let's grab some yellow. 
And it wasn't until this morning as I was sitting and thinking and praying and asking for guidance that I thought about it's the waiting, the waiting and the agony. And yet it is common to all of us. It is common to all of us, the waiting between death and between life coming again. Let's add just a little bit of yellow by the crosses in the sky and down here too. I guess depending on when using our imaginations, we could also say that perhaps this is Saturday, the day of waiting, and this is sunrise coming up Easter morning. And they are indeed waiting. I just want, I included a candle down here to symbolize Jesus, the light of the world, the light he said he would never be put out, and he wasn't. He is the vine, we are the branches. And so just creating this tree, it's not a vine, but that tree, that he is the trunk, right? He's a source of the life. He is the light of the world. I think, you know, he is the gate. He is the good shepherd. Okay, I'm looking one more, one more time here as I do one more final wrap up. I'm gonna take my brown and then just a little bit over the city. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown over some of these walls and then a little bit of yellow the light in some of the windows. Let's always be looking out for the light. Let's always keep our eyes up and out towards Jesus, no matter how hard life gets. Let's always remember Easter, the promise of Easter, that Jesus is here. He is with us. And that there's reason for celebrating always, always, and forever. I hope wherever you are, wherever you are, and whatever you're doing this Easter, that you do experience a renewed sense of the joy of Jesus, of his life flowing in you and through you. And I pray you have a wonderful, wonderful Resurrection Sunday. And in your waiting period, I pray also you find the peace of Jesus that he offers. He's never, he will never leave us or forsake us. He is with us in all of our hard times, our good times. I'm going to come through here one more time. I'm going to just go ahead and add a little bit more grass. You might want to do the same. I'm going to let it dry and I'll probably come back in and add a few more details. And like we often do, if you want to flip it when it comes back, when it dries and write your own prayer of what Jesus means to you this Easter or maybe what your season of waiting means in the um, perspective of eternity of, of Easter. Um, I oftentimes will flip my, my Easter projects on the back and write out a prayer and my thoughts and where I am and, and what Jesus means to me. It's a wonderful way to remember and celebrate Jesus during the Easter season. Thank you so much for painting with me today, and I look forward to painting with you again very 